It's from the Greek, unike, meaning victorious. He laughed, happy to demonstrate that before he was forced to be a janitor in America, he had served as a quasi-intellectual and minor dandy on Moscow's Arbat Street. So I hope, he said, that in life you will be victorious also. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares about Greek Boris, my mother said. Look at how she is beautiful. The fact that my parents admired Eunice's looks and capacity for victory brightened me quite a bit. In all these years that I still craved their approval, still longed for the carrots and stick of their 19th century child rearing. I instructed myself to lower the heat of my emotions, to think without the family blood bursting at my temples. But I was 12 years old as soon as I passed the mezuzah at the front door. My father began to lead me to the living room couch for our usual heart to heart. My mother rushed over to the heart, rushed over to the couch with a garbage bag, which she draped over the place where I was about to sit in my compromised Manhattan outerwear. She took Eunice to the kitchen, chatting gaily to her potential daughter-in-law about how guys can be so dirty, you know, and how she had just built a new storage device for her many mops. <laughs> On the couch, my father draped his arm around my shoulder and said, "Nur скажи, so tell me. I breathed in the same breath as he did, as if we were connected. I felt his age seep into mine, as if he were the forward guard of my own mortality. I spoke in English with the tantalizing hints of Russian I had studied haphazardly at NYU, the foreign words like raisins shining out of a loaf. I spoke about work, about my assets, about all the monetary things that kept us fearful and connected. He held up the new apparat pendant I wore around my neck. How much, he said, turning the thing over, colorful data and rankings pouring over his hairy fingers. When I explained that the device was given to me at work, he made a happy snort and said in English, ah, learn new technology for free. It's good, it's good. <laughs> the floor beneath my feet was clean, immigrant clean, clean enough so that you understood that somebody had done their best. My father had two old-fashioned television screens stapled to the walls above my mother's fanatically waxed mantelpiece. In this future, there's only two uh, uh, television outlets left. There's uh, Fox Liberty Prime and Fox Liberty Ultra. So, you yeah, have a nice choice. Of, uh, reading did not go over well in Houston. <laughs> One TV was set to a Fox Liberty Prime stream, which was showing the growing tent city in Central Park. The homeless people now spread from, now spread from the backyard of the Metropolitan Museum, over hill and dale, all the way down to the sheep's meadow. On the other screen, Fox Liberty Ultra was viciously broadcasting the arrival of our new master, the Chinese central banker at Andrews Air Force Base, our president and his pretty wife trying not to shiver in the bleak Maryland downpour. I felt my father's breath against my cheek for 20 minutes as he talked about his com complex political life on the Fox then excused myself, unwound from his human embrace, and went to the upstairs bedroom as my mother shouted to me from the kitchen, Lenny, don't take shoes off in upstairs bedroom. Papa has gribok, athlete's foot. In the contaminated bathroom, I admired the strange blob of plastic with wooden spokes that kept my mother's serious mop collection in ready-to-access mode. <laughs> Although my parents never had a good word to say about the country recently renamed as Holy Petrol Russia, the hallways were hung with framed sepia-toned postcards of Red Square and the Kremlin, the snow-dusted equestrian statues of Prince Yuri Dolgoruki, founder of Moscow, and the Gothic Stalin-era skyscraper of prestigious Moscow State University, which neither of my parents had attended because to hear them tell it, Jews were not allowed in back then. As for me, I have never been to Russia. I have not had the chance to learn to love it and hate it like my parents. I have my own dying empire to contend with, this one, and I do not wish for any other. My bedroom was nearly empty, and all the traces of my habitation, the posters and little bits of crap for my travels were gone. I reveled in the smallness, the coziness of an upstairs bedroom in a traditional American Cape Cod house, that half floor that forces you to duck to feel small and naive again. I cannot begin to tell you how much the purchase of this house, of each tiny bedroom, had meant to my family and to me. I still remember the signing at the real estate lawyer's office, the three of us mentally <coughs> forgiving each other for a decade and a half worth of sins, the youthful beatings administered by my father, my mother's anxiety and manias, my own teenage sullenness, because the janitor and his wife 
had done something right at last, and it would all be okay now. There was no turning back from this from this glorious fortune we had been grant granted in the middle of Long Island, from the carefully clipped bushes by the mailbox, our bushes, a brahm of bushes, to the often mentioned Californian possibility of an above ground swimming pool in the tiny backyard. Out in the hallway I caught sight of a frame memento, an essay my father had written in English for the newsletter of the Long Island Scientific Laboratory where he worked, in which I, as an undergraduate NYU English major, had helped to proofread and refine. The Joys of Playing Basketball by Boris Abramov. Sometimes life is difficult, and one wishes to relieve oneself of the pressures and the worries of life. Some people see a shrink. Others jump in a cold lake or travel around the world but I find nothing more joyful than playing basketball. At the laboratory, we have many men, and even women, who like to play basketball. They come from all over the world, from Europe, Latin America, and everywhere else. I cannot say I am the best player. I am not so young anymore, my knees hurt, and I am also pretty short, and this is a handicap. But I take the game very seriously, and when a big problem comes up in my life and I feel like I do not want to live, I sometimes like to picture myself on the court, trying to throw a ball from a great distance, or maneuvering against an agile opponent. I try to play in a smart way. As a result, I find I am often victorious, even against a much taller or faster player from Africa or Brazil, let's say. <laughs> but win or lose, what's important is the spirit of this beautiful game, so if you have an hour on Tuesday or Thursday at lunchtime, 1230, please join me and your colleagues for a good healthy time in the Physical Education Center. You'll feel better about yourself, and the worries of life will, as they say, melt away. Boris Abramov is a custodian in the Buildings and Grounds Division. Down in the dining room with the shiny Romanian furniture the Abramovs had imported from their Moscow apartment, the table was laid out in the hospitable Russian manner with everything from four different kinds of salami to a plate of chewy tongue to every little fish that had ever inhabited the Baltic Sea. <laughs> Not to mention that sacred little dash of black caviar. Eunice sat Queen Esther-like in her orthodox getup at the ceremonial end of the table upon a fluffed up Passover pillow frowning at the attention, unsure of how to deal with the strange currents of love and its opposite that circulated in the fish-smelling air. My father proposed a seasonal toast in English to the creator who created America, land of free, and who gives us now Defense Secretary Rubinstein, who kills Arab. And to laugh, which is blooming in such time between my son and Unike, who, big wink to Eunice, will be victorious like Sparta over Athens, and to the summer, which is most conducive season to love, although some may say spring. <laughs> While he went on in his booming voice, the shot glass shaking in his troubled hand, my mother, bored out of her mind, leaned over to me and said, Кстати, у твоей Юнис очень красивые зубы. Может быть, ты женишься? By the way, your Eunice has very pretty teeth. Maybe you will marry her. <laughs> I could see Eunice's mind absorbing the basics of my father's speech. Arabs, bad. Jews, good. <laughs> Chinese central banker, possibly okay. America, always number one in his heart. While she gauged the intent on my mother's face as she spoke to me in Russian, Eunice's mind moved so quickly through feelings and ideas, but the fear in her face reflected a life rushing by faster than she could make sense of it. The toast finally complete, we dove into the food without reservation, all of us from countries historically strangled by starvation, none of us strangers to salt and brine. Eunice, my mother said, perhaps you can answer for me this question, who is Lenny by profession? I never can figure out. He went to NYU business school, so he is what, businessman? Mama, I said, please, not now, not now. I am talking to Eunice, my mother said. You know, girl talk. <laughs> I had never seen Eunice's face so serious, even as the tail end of a Baltic sardine disappeared between her glossy lips. Well, he does like very important work, she told my mother. It's, I think, like medicine? <laughs> like he helps people live forever? My father's fist slammed the dining table. Impossible, he cried. It breaks every law of physics and biology, for one. For two, it's immoral against God. Who? I would not want such thing. 
Work is work, my mother said. If stupid rich American wants to live forever and Lenny makes money, why do you care? She waved her hand at my father. Stupid, she said. <laughs> yes, but how will you know about medicine? My father lit up, brandishing a fork capped by a marinated mushroom. He never studied in high school. What is his weighted average? 86.894. <laughs> mother waved him off again and turned to Eunice. So you met Lenny in Italy, she said? Lenny tells us you speak perfect Italian. My mother waved him off again and turned to, oh, I'm sorry, Eunice blushed some more. Like, no, she said, lowering her eyes and cupping her knees. Like, I'm forgetting everything? Like the irregular verbs? <laughs> Lenny spends one year in Italy, my father said. We come to visit him, he speaks nothing. Blah, 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 blah. He moved his body to imitate my walking through the Roman streets while trying to talk to the natives. You are a liar, Boris, my mother said casually. He bought us beautiful tomato in market. He brought down price, three euro. But tomato is so simple, my father said. In Russian, pomodoro, in Italian, pomodoro. Even I know such thing. If he maybe negotiates for us cucumber or squash. <laughs> Zatknise уже, Bora. Shut up already, Boris, my mother said. She readjusted her summer blouse and bored her eyes into mine. Lenny, she said, we see you appear on Apparat Stream. A hundred and one people we need to feel sorry for. Why do you do it? Your colleague, he makes fun of you. He says you are fat and stupid and old. You don't eat good food and you do not have profession and your fuckability rankings are very low. <laughs> Also, he says, Tibia you've been demoted at the company for which you work. Papa and I are very sad about your fuckability. <laughs> my father looked away in some shame while I curled and uncurled my toes beneath the table. I told him so many times not to look at any apparat streams or data about me. I was a private person with my own little world. Why couldn't they find a better use for their retirement years than this painful scrutiny of their only child? Why did they stalk me with their tomatoes and high school averages and who are you by profession logic? And then I heard Eunice speak, her straightforward Californian English ringing against the smallness of our house. Like, I told them not to appear in it too, she said. And he won't anymore. You won't, right, Lenny? Like, you're so good and smart. Like, why do you need to do it? Exactly, my mother said. Exactly, Eunice. I did not say anything. I leaned back and watched the two women in my life look across a glossy Romanian table, groaning beneath a plastic cover and 20 gallons of mayonnaise and canned fish. They were eyeing each other with a placid understanding. Sometimes mothers and girlfriends compete against one another, but that has never been my experience. It is quite easy for two smart women, no matter what the gap in their age and background, to come to a complete agreement about me. <laughs> this child, they seem to be saying to each other, this child still needs to be brought up. Thank you. I will take any questions or complaints, concerns. <laughs> Why are you more like this? Why can't you be more like that? Are there any relatives of mine in the audience? Uh, yes. Absolutely. I love the, the excerpt. I've read your first two books. My question is just sort of, I wanted to cut, did you lose a lot of weight since one of the pictures was taken on, on that cover? Um, the pictures do add a lot of weight. The question is, have I lost a lot of weight uh, since my last picture? I'm on a fully macrobiotic diet. Um, uh, it, it consists of, of a very macrobiotic tripe and, and uh, pig trotters. So um, I'm very thin. But thank you for noticing. Um, I was at one point a size 33, and now I'm a size 30 for, for jeans. Uh, when, when, when I go to Williamsburg, even the skinny jean hipsters are like, whoa. <laughs> Move over, the new sheriff's in town, and he bought a weenie dog. <laughs> so I'm not even reading in Williamsburg anymore. They're, they're scared. 